Hey everyone, welcome to our first prayer session. So how this is going to work, as I already explained, is that we're going to be talking about a saint first and how they developed a prayer method. And then I'm going to walk you through the prayer method and then we're going to actually do a guided meditation. So welcome. So glad you're here. Our first session is on Saint Benedict. So Saint Benedict is one of the most crucial and key saints in the Catholic Church. He was born in 480 in a small town of Nursia, Italy. Random fact, I actually went there and it's super cool. It's like this tiny little town, like a little Roman town with a little wall built around it. The ancient Roman wall is still around it and it's nestled in the middle of some mountains and it's so beautiful. Anyway, so St. Benedict was born in 480 in this small Italian town. He had a twin sister, St. Scholastica. Uh, so already super holy family, right? Um, if you and your sister both become saints, can you imagine what their childhood arguments were like? Um, no, 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 here, you can have my toy. No, 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 I don't want it, not at all. No, 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 no. please, please take my toy, please, please. But yeah, super holy. Anyway, uh, so St. Benedict, he was born into a wealthy noble family, and then he went to Rome to study when he was a teenager. So uh, there he had some, we don't know much about his childhood life, but once he became a student in Rome, he didn't really like it all that much. And he thought, you know, instead of studying to be a, uh, to be whatever I'm going to grow up to be when I become an adult, I'm going to go abandon everything and go live in a cave by myself for three years. And so that's actually what he did. He left everything in Rome. He left his family in his small Italian town. And he went and he found this random remote cave and lived in it for three years by himself as a hermit, which is a little nuts if you ask me. Uh, so uh, he didn't really want contact with too many people. He just wanted to grow between, like grow his relationship between himself and God. But God doesn't like it when we try and cut ourselves off from other people. He likes us growing in community with each other. So people heard about St. Benedict and naturally where they were like, whoa, super holy crazy guy living in a cave. I want to do that too. So actually he had, it had the opposite effect that he wanted. He wanted to isolate himself and live alone in a cave by himself for the rest of his life. And actually what happened was, is that all these men started following him and living in little caves around him. So St. Benedict had this, this crisis of faith, if you will. It's like, no, I really want to live by myself, guys. Super introvert, don't want to talk to anyone. It's just me and God. And God's like, just kidding. So uh, St. Benedict then, uh, he's living like this for a few years. He actually has someone from a nearby monastery bringing him food every couple of days because you're probably wondering, wait, how did he not starve? And what did this cave look like? You can actually look it up on the internet, look up St. Benedict Cave. You can find it. You can actually travel to it today. So um, a few years later, three years into his cave living experience, he um, was asked by a local monastery to come and be the head of their monastery. And he prayed about it and he prayed about it. He's like, okay, maybe this whole living alone thing isn't for me. So he decides to go and live in this monastery and be the head of all these monks. And he had a very clear idea of what it was to be a good monk. And that meant uh, creating structure, creating prayer times, making sure that you were giving up the world, like coming from the guy who lived in a cave. And then he goes and he meets these monks and these monks aren't super holy. Not at all. Um, they're so not holy that they get super annoyed with St. Benedict because he, you have this super strict guy coming in and saying, no, we're giving up all this. We're giving up that. We're giving up this. We're giving up that. All of it. We're giving up all of it because we're focusing on God. And so in the fifth century, sixth century, what did you do when you got annoyed with somebody? Well, naturally only course that you could do is poison them, right? And that's exactly what they did. So they decided to poison St. Benedict. And now here's a cool story. They put some poison in his drink and they bring him this chalice filled with poisoned wine. And St. Benedict, he may have suspected something, he may not have. So he decided to bless his drink and the glass shattered. So St. Benedict is known for uh, being the patron saint against poisoning. 
kind of exciting, right? You want to be known as that saint, the guy who prevents people from getting poisoned. So Saint Benedict uh, naturally wasn't terribly well liked by his monks. Um, but there were also plenty of other people that really did like him. Anyway, uh, another monk, another funny story, another funny poisoning story. This guy had a problem with poisoning. Uh, another funny poisoning story was that he had, a, there was a monk who was jealous of him and how successful St. Benedict was. Even though these monks didn't like him, there were tons of other people who did. And he was really successful at what he did in the 500s. So this other guy decided to put some poison in his bread and gave him bread. And again, St. Benedict blesses his bread and then a raven comes in and swoops in, takes the bread and flies away. So yeah, crazy stuff around poisoning because that's apparently how you killed people in the 500s. All right, so crazy miracles around St. Benedict, but now what did he actually do for the church? What did he really do? That was so crazy and so incredible and changed the life of the church. So St. Benedict was known as establishing some of the first monasteries with monks. And these monasteries are still around today. You can go visit. The monastery that he started was called Monte Cassino. You can still visit this in Italy today. The order that he started, the Benedictine order named after him, is still around today. And it's one of the oldest religious orders in the world. He developed something called the Rule of St. Benedict. And this is uh, a system of how monks were supposed to live. This rule, this rule, this rule, this rule, this rule, this rule. And it really set up for how men and women were supposed to live in community with each other while pursuing God. So St. Benedict revolutionized the church in the 500s and really made it possible for men and women to come and live in community together and worship God. So... Um, Another thing, uh, towards the end of his life, the rule actually comes into play. His sister, who I mentioned at the beginning, St. Scholastica, she's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, St. Scholastica and St. Benedict got together one day. They didn't very see each other very often. He was busy starting up the monks, and she actually followed in her brother's twin brother's footsteps and started up a group of nuns called the Benedictine Nuns. Uh, so uh, they didn't get together very often because they were both so busy but towards the end of their lives, St. Scholastica had this idea that, kind of an idea from God, like, I think I'm going to die soon. And so St. Benedict actually came and visited her. And when they were hanging out, chatting, having great sibling conversation, and uh, he gets ready to leave. The night's starting and he's getting ready to leave. And one of the rules that he said was that a monk was not allowed to be outside of the monastery at night. And St. Scholastica said, but please please stay with me. I really want you to stay with me. Uh, we were talking about so many great things. I don't think I have much time left. Please stay with me. And St. Benedict said, no, 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 do we'll leave. No, got to follow my rule. Got to follow my rule. Well, St. Ben, St. Scholastica at that point, knowing that she wasn't going to persuade her brother, falls to her knees, starts weeping and praying to God, please let my brother stay with me. And St. Saint, Saint Benedict standing right here and St. Scholastica is like on her knees, begging God, please let my brother stay. All of a sudden, thunder and lightning start. It starts raining cats and dogs, and St. Benedict can't go anywhere. So he takes this as a sign from God that he was supposed to stay with St. Scholastica. So he does. He stays with her, and they talk all night long. And if this was the last time that they got to see each other as siblings, three days later, St. Benedict saw a dove fly by his land on his window and then fly away. And he knew that it was a sign from God that his sister had actually died. So if you ever want a snow day from school, St. Scholastica is your buddy. She is the patron saint of weather. So praise St. Scholastica for that future snow day. Anyway, now getting on to what we're focusing on with St. Benedict and our next session where I'm going to see you. St. Benedict actually developed a prayer method. They, well, he didn't develop it. He kind of built it up. And then other monks after him made it even more concrete. This prayer method is called Lexio Divina. And this is what all Benedictine monks and all Benedictine nuns do every day their entire lives while they're monks and nuns. So we're going to talk about that prayer method next time I see you. Until then, ciao!